Hello, hello, I'm Laura the Librarian, and you're watching New Book Tuesday. I thought we'd do something a little different this month. Something I do every month for our staff is I put together a slideshow of some of the new books and then some other books to recommend if people are interested in finding those books. The thing about this slideshow is that I focus on diverse materials, so authors of different races and ethnicities, personal stories from different cultures, different sexualities and genders, and more and more I bring in books um, by and about people who are neurodiverse, ability diverse, uh, and that way everyone on staff gets um, better at knowing what, what all is on our shelves and can make informed recommendations for people. So one of the fiction books we have this month is Run and Hide by Pankaj Mishra, which is set in current contemporary India, and it's about um, someone overcoming social barriers and trying to find success and um, also becoming a little bit corrupt along the way. So if you're waiting for Run and Hide, what might you read instead? So you might try The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith, which is also a story of someone from a lower class kind of getting into the upper class lifestyle and, and having it corrupt him in a way. And then another option from the fiction section is A State of Freedom by Neil Mukherjee, which is again also set in contemporary India, but is about um, various different people sort of striving for a better life. Another new fiction book that sounds really wonderful is When We Were Birds by Ayana Lloyd Manlo. It's a mythical love story set in Trinidad. And what happens is that a woman who guides souls to the afterlife meets a grave digger. So that's sort of a fun setup. So we've got Reincarnation Blues by Michael Poor, which is about a man who has 10,000 lives to live. And um, there's one person he's trying to be with forever. So he has five more tries to get it right. And that's what's happening here. Remote Control by Anetia Korafor, who writes African Futurism. Um, so you've got a little of the sci-fi vibe right there. And this one is about a young woman who becomes Death's adopted daughter. For our fans of sweeping historical romancy fiction, you might like to try A Ballad of Love and Glory by Reina Grande. It's about a Mexican army nurse and an Irish immigrant soldier meeting during the Mexican-American War. A couple things I picked to go with that book are Janet Daly, who is known for her kind of sweeping Americana set um, romancy stories that kind of ride the line between romance and fiction. Um, but setting is very important in her works, too. And so another one I picked is Cold Mountain, which has the um, the war in the background, different war, but um, this one's the Civil War. Plus, uh, again, the, uh, the location, the landscape is very important. All right, our next book is a fun little rom-com called Camila Knows Best by Farrah Heron, and it is inspired by Emma by Jane Austen. So... We've got a young woman who loves to throw Bollywood parties and loves to set her friends up with people. Um, and then she's not thinking about love until an old friend re-enters her life. A couple options I picked are also retellings of Austen stories. So we have Unmarriageable by Sonia Kamal, which tells you right on the cover. It's Pride and Prejudice in Pakistan. Super fun. And then we have a modern day retelling of Emma by Alexander McCall Smith. A nonfiction book I've been really excited about is Rise, a pop history of Asian America from the 90s to now by Jeff Yang, Phil Yu, and Philip Wang. It's all about the cultural impact of Asian Americans and the integration of Asian cultures into the mainstream of American pop culture since 1990. If you get a chance to look at this book, look at the cover, the little illustrations of the people um, on the front are, are very cool. They're very recognizable. Like, even in my bad printed copy right here, we've got Sandra Oh, and we've got Kamala Harris, and we've got uh, Naomi Osaka. There have actually been a lot of books recently um, about exploring Asian American cultures of various types. Minor Feelings and Asian American Reckoning by Kathy Park Hong. This is going to be more intense, and it's going to be um, like straightforward nonfiction essays about being an Asian person and how that fits into America, particularly with the sort of um, racial binary that is so um, sort of ingrained in the mainstream. Well, on the more fun, more illustrated side, I picked American Born Chinese by Jean Lu and Yang, which is a graphic novel from the teen section. 
this book is really super fun. It's both about um, a child who's trying to sort of assimilate into an American school, and it's got this whole mythological backstory of the Monkey King. It's a great book. I have two other ideas here, but they're both checked out. Um, there's a pretty recent novel called Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu, and it's about um, a, an Asian actor who's trying to break into the TV business. And another one I thought would be great is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner, um, which is kind of all about her processing the grief from her mother's death. Part of it involves the famous Asian supermarket H Mart. This new book is actually on the shelf. You can check it out. This is a memoir called This Time for Me by Alexandra Billings, the trans actor and activist who is maybe best known for her role in Transparent. She's kind of like the main friend who helps the main character kind of come to terms with her identity. And she was really one of the, the first trans actresses who was uh, able to find work and make a name for herself. And um, I think she just has a really fascinating life. The Transparent Connection, the creator of Transparent, Joey Soloway, um, has spent a lot of their life thinking about uh, the male gaze and feminism and how feminism interacts with the patriarchy. In any case, this was their book called She Wants It. And then another relatively new trans memoir. This is Precious Grady Davis, I Have Always Been Mine. She and her husband are both activists in the trans community, particularly in Chicago, and she's currently running for office. I've been making a pretty substantial effort over the last few years to bring more um, Latino voices onto our shelves. It's something that you actually don't see very much of in mainstream publishing. So when I find something that I think might be interesting, I bring it in. So something new on our shelves is Who Do I Think I Am? by Angela Johnson Reyes, who is a comedian and actress, has had some videos go viral. She's probably best known from Mad TV. Anyway, she's talking about her life growing up in a strict Christian household um, and her current faith. And she's also kind of riffing about Latino culture. Definitely Hispanic by Luan James, who is also kind of a viral video comedian kind of guy. And he's talking a lot about um, what kind of unites different different cultures that call themselves Latino um, and, and how that can sort of bring people together. Funny guy. Um, and one of the things Angela Johnson Reyes is known for is being a clean comic. Um, so another one I thought I would pick is When Life Gives You Pears by Jeannie Gaffigan. She is the wife of Jim Gaffigan. They co-write all of his material, so she's um, just as funny as him, if not more so. Um, but this was her book all about having cancer um, and taking care of their five children and her husband's comedy career. Um, so again, this one has the clean comedy aspect, it has the faith aspect. I think would appeal to a lot of the same readers. Maybe you. I hope you found something great to read. The library is open now, so come on in. Otherwise, give us a call. We can help you out. See you soon.